All right, so we last left off with a CRUD app for students, and we were using a list as some storage. But what we'd like to introduce now is to back this with a database. Now we're gonna be using an ORM called SQL Alchemy. We're gonna use the Flask abstraction on that called Flask SQL Alchemy. So in order to get this to work, we actually have to install two more dependencies. I wanna make sure I grab everything from that student app, and we'll call this student app with SQL Alchemy. So I'm going to copy over all that stuff, and I'm going to CD into student app SQL Alchemy. And inside of here, you can make a new virtual environment, but I'm going to stick with this first Flask app that I have. So we're going to pip install Flask SQL Alchemy. We're also going to install something called Psycho PG2. And that's going to allow me to use Postgres as the database management system. If you're using something like MySQL or SQLite 3, that would be different. But Psycho PG2 is called an adapter or a connector and that's gonna let me use Postgres. So if you have Postgres installed, you should be able to have a command line command called create DB. You can also do this from PSQL, but while this is installing, let's simply figure out how we're gonna make that specific database. So what I'm gonna do is create a DB, and we're gonna call this Flask Student App. If I've successfully created that, I should be able to go to PSQL and see what Flask student app looks like. If I see inside of here and look at my tables, there is nothing there. And that's okay, because I haven't made any tables yet. Backslash Q to quit out. Now that I have the dependencies that I need, let's go back to Sublime and see what things need to change. The good news is this entire student.py, I don't need any of it, because I'm gonna be using SQL Alchemy as the class to manage that information. But what do I need to think about doing now? Well, I'm gonna need something from Flask SQL Alchemy. Once again, we can get rid of this, and we can instead say from Flask SQL Alchemy, we're going to import the SQL Alchemy class. And what are we gonna do with the SQL Alchemy class? Well, very similar to what we did with Modis, we're gonna make a variable called DB, and we're going to initialize SQL Alchemy with our application. You might see my linter yelling at me a bit, that's okay, we're gonna take some stuff out later. But for now, what we need to think about doing is making that table. Now we could go to PSQL and we could type in create table students and we could pass in ID, serial, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But we're gonna use Python to make that for us. We're gonna do that by creating a model. And a model is simply a class that represents our data. So what is the name of the class? Well, just like before, it's student. Except in order to get the ability to create a table, and create columns all done through Python, we need to inherit from db.model. So this class is going to inherit from db.model. This class is gonna have a special property called table name, and we want this to be students. By default, the table is gonna be called student. We wanna keep our tables in the plural. So let's make sure that we have that as well. We also wanna add a couple columns for our students table. This is called DDL, or data definition language. What columns do I want? Well, I want an ID. An ID should be a column. Remember this DB is coming from the instance of SQL Alchemy. I'm gonna use that quite a bit to make my columns. And what do I want this to be? I want it to be an integer. But I also want a keyword argument of primary key. And I want that to be true. Remember that primary keys are going to enforce the constraint of uniqueness. And that's very important to have unique IDs and unique instances or rows in your database. What else do we want? We want a first name. And first name is gonna be a db.column. And here, what's the data type that I want? Just text, let's keep it real simple. I'm gonna make another property called last name, and that's going to be db.column of text as well. Now, all I'm doing here is setting up my columns, but what happens when I create an instance of my student class? Well, we want that same special method that we saw before, dunder init, all instance methods, except self as the first parameter, and we'll pass in a first name and a last name. This should look really familiar. We did this in the last application, but here we're gonna be using SQL Alchemy to actually run this. So when we save things, it's gonna be saved to a database. We're not gonna to worry too much about having to do things like start the server again and make sure the ID is correct. It's gonna be a little bit nicer right now. So what do I wanna make sure that I have? I wanna make sure I have a first name. And that's gonna be equal to whatever the first name value that's passed in. We'll do the same thing with last name. Just to go over those shortcuts again, I'm on a Mac, Command-Shift-D to duplicate the line. Command D to highlight the next occurrence. Don't have to memorize all of these, but it will make you a little bit faster when building this stuff. So I'm gonna save this right now. 
And now the challenge is, how do I turn this code into an actual database table? Well, what I'm going to do is going to hop into IPython right now. And what I'm going to use is the db.createAll command. So from my app, I'm going to import db. And here we go, no module named Flask Modus. Hmm, that's a problem. Let's quit out of this. What's the problem here? Let's take a look at the dependencies that I have. And if we take a look, I don't have Flask Modus. Hmm, let's make sure, pip install Flask Modus. You might see this sometimes if you miss a dependency and that's okay. Now, this should not work, but I wanna demonstrate why this isn't going to work. So I'm going to, from app, I'm gonna import my DB. And if we see right here, it's gonna tell me Hmm. Defaulting SQL Alchemy database URI to SQLite 3 memory. Hmm. That's, that's not good because I want to make sure that I'm using Postgres for that. So I'm going to quit out of here to make sure that I'm working with the correct database. And what I need to do is add a configuration setting in my application. So we're going to do app.config. And what do I want to add? SQL Alchemy database URI. This is going to be the URL that I connect to and the protocol that we're using is Postgres. This is being stored at localhost. And what is the name of the database that I made? Well, let's go back and double check that. That was Flask Student App. So I can copy this if I want. And let's save that. Now what I'm doing here is just making sure that instead of defaulting to some SQLite 3 database, I use Postgres for this. Because I want to make sure that I'm using Postgres to save this and persist it. So back in the terminal, Let's make sure that we got that correct. I'll quickly hop into IPython. And once again, from the app, we're gonna import that DB variable. Don't worry too much about this track modification stuff. What I'm gonna do now is db.createAll. And you might have seen that I'm getting none back from this, but what did I actually do? Let's hop into PSQL with the name of our database. And if we take a look at our tables, whoa, we have a student's table. Let's see what that actually looks like, D plus students. You can see right here, we'll make that a little bit cleaner. It has an ID of integer, it's a sequence. We have a text and a text for first name and last name. That looks good. We have a primary key on our students. All of this was done by the method that we used, db.createAll. And you might be thinking, that's pretty awesome. We just made all our tables with this one command. But there's actually something that's not great about this. If we were adding additional changes to our database, it'd be really hard to know when these changes have been made and what changes have occurred. You can kind of think of this as a problem like we want to use some kind of version control or way of managing changes to our schema or structure of our tables. Right now, we don't have that. In the next video, we're going to introduce an essential concept called migrations to help out with that. But for now, Let's just stick with using db.createAll. It's not the best option, but it's a good way just to start using SQL Alchemy. So the nice thing about this is most of the structure of my templates is gonna be the same. I'm gonna take out this students right now, and I'm not gonna use the find student method. And that's because when I use SQL Alchemy, there are easier ways to find that information. For starters, the way to find all of the students is to use student.query.all. This is the SQL, Flask SQL Alchemy method to select all of the students from my table. And if we see right here, students.append, well, that's not going to work either. The way to add something to the database is to first add it to what's called the DB session. And this is where we're about to start writing something to the database. We're going to add that new student. Then we have to make sure that we do db.session.commit. This is Flask SQL Alchemy telling us to add something to the database and then commit it or actually write it to the database. You have to make sure you have that db.session.commit or it's not actually gonna write to the database. Let's not worry too much about these other things. Let's start up the server and see what it looks like. So we're gonna run python app.py. Gonna head over to localhost 3000 and we're gonna see that we can add a student. Once again, let's add me. We're gonna add Ellie Shopik and we see that we actually have that student being added. What's nice about this, and I'm actually going to open up a new tab here. I recommend you have two tabs so you can see what's happening on the database level as well as the server. I'm going to hop in here and I'm going to select everything from students. And there I am. Now I'm actually being stored in a database. What that means is that if the server goes down and we start the server back up, 
the data is going to persist. And that's really what you're going to do in production applications. You're not really going to store too many things in memory that really should be saved on disk in a database. That's great. What's nice about this also is all we need to do is just fix up a couple methods here. Instead of making our own find student method, we're going to use Flask SQL Alchemy. So how do we do that? We use student.query.get. And that is going to get me that specific instance. How about removing? What's that going to look like? Well, we've seen this before. When we add, we always have to db.session.add and db.session.commit. That's going to be for updating. How about for deleting? db.session.delete and then db.session.commit. We're simply overwriting the methods that we wrote last time with the Flask SQL Alchemy methods like student.query.get. Remember, student is the model that we've made. That's the representation of our data. That model or class method has a property called query, which allows me to then write methods or use methods to get specific elements, to filter elements. Get is the simplest way to find something by an ID by default. So let's go see if we have CRUD working. I'll go to Ellie. Let's delete this student. That looks good. Let's add a student. We'll add Ellie, show pick once again. Let's go click on Ellie and we can see that the ID is two. Take a look back here. Let's edit this student. We'll add a bunch of exclamation marks. We'll edit the student and it looks like we still have full CRUD going on. But what's nice about this is everything is being backed by a database. We can see that the ID has changed because I've removed a record. So the only thing that I needed to do in order to get this to work, let's take a step back and review what we did. We imported SQL Alchemy. In order to do that, we needed to pip install Flask SQL Alchemy, as well as Psycho PG2. That's the adapter to use Postgres. We then made sure that we configured the correct database to connect to so that we don't default to something like SQLite 3. And then we set up our model. This was really the bulk of the work that we needed to do. Make sure we get the right table name. Make sure we get the columns that we want, especially things like setting a primary key for an ID. You should always do that. Make sure that every row that we make has a first name and last name property. This function is going to be run when we make a student. This actually looks exactly the same as before, but the new things we spoke about, db.session.add, db.session.commit, as well as db.session.delete. And finally, the method to get a specific student, student.query.get. The method to get all of the students, student.query.all. Just make sure you invoke that. So we made a lot of pretty large changes to make this happen. We also had to create DB. So you can do that either in the terminal or you can use the create database command in PSQL to make a database. Either one of those will totally work. And the most important thing was we went back we went into IPython or Python 3. It really doesn't matter which one you do. But you have to make sure from the app you import that DB, and then you use the db.createAll command. This is what is going to make your tables. We're going to see in the next screencast there's a better way to do it. But for now, let's just get used to getting started with SQL Alchemy. And I'll see you in the next screencast.